Hey guys, it's 80s Everything here, and today I have another awesome 80s interview with my good friend, Mr. Mac. So, uh, Mr. Mac, um, I really thank you uh, for having me on my channel. Well, thank you for having me here today, Ross. I'm, I'm so excited about it. That's awesome. And uh, how about um, telling me how your life was in the 1980s, or tell the viewers, not the <laughs> You know, uh, in the 80s, in 1980, I turned 15 years old. So for the, for the whole decade, I lived my teens and uh, early adult life. Uh, if I was to go back and think about what life was like for me in the 80s, I would say it was definitely an easier time. It was, it was simpler. Um, you know, the idea of hanging out with your friends in the, in the 80s meant you had to leave your house meet up with your friends and hang out and do stuff. Um, unlike, unlike hanging out with my friends today where you can actually meet up online, hang out online and never ever leave your bedroom or change out of your pajamas if you didn't want to. So yeah, life in the 80s was definitely much simpler. That's nice, that's really nice. Um, I was wondering um, if you have a favorite 80s movie. Have I ever seen 80s movies? No, if you have a favorite 80s oh, movie. Oh, if I have a favorite 80s movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, the 80s, uh, I don't know. I, 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 there's many, many great movies back in the 80s. I know that uh, E.T., 1982, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Poltergeist, they were all released around that same time too, uh, early 80s. The Goonies was another great movie. I hear people talk about that one today. Um, I would say of all the 80s movies that I can remember, my favorite 80s movie would have to either be Top Gun or The Breakfast Club. Both iconic uh, Americana, if you will, uh, movies. That's awesome. I have seen Top Gun, but sadly I haven't watched the ending of it. I just got to the middle of it. You fall asleep? <laughs> no, I didn't fall asleep. Um, but anyway, uh, do you have a favorite TV show from that time? Yeah, there were many, uh, many great TV shows back then. I, I think, it, from what I remember, uh, one of the longest running TV shows, wasn't, wasn't perhaps my favorite, but I remember one of the longest running TV shows was the show called Dallas. Matter of fact, I think they even tried to recreate it. Uh, and I don't I don't think that it went even as well as the one in the 80s and uh, the Dukes of Hazard. You know, a show that's been around since the 80s and it's still out today is 60 Minutes. And I'm sure a lot of your viewers are very familiar with 60 Minutes. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I think one of the shows that I watched the most was probably Cheers. It was one of the uh, longest running uh, sitcoms. It was super funny. Uh, I know that it, it, it won like something like 20 something prime time Emmys and it won like I know for sure it, it, it won like six Golden Globes. So yeah, it was a it was a super popular, great, uh, great, funny, funny show. That's awesome. Um, I was wondering uh, if you have a uh, favorite uh, song or favorite band. Favorite song, favorite band. Oh man, you know the '80s. It was the era of rock and roll. Uh, you know, prior to that, it was like it was like. DDs and and you know the, the disco era and that went out and then rock and roll bands started hitting the scene and you know hair bands. Uh, I remember some some great bands from the 80s like uh, Heart, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Kiss came out in the 80s. Kiss uh, smashing it and they were smashing it long after the 80s. Uh, bon Jovi, uh, Hall and Oates, Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses. Uh, these are all great Metallica, great bands from the 80s. But I think, uh, man, I don't know, bands, performers too. You know, there was there were single performers like Michael Jackson. He was big in the 80s. Uh, Michael Bolton came out, Cindy Lauper. Girls just want to have fun. Well, guys wanted to have fun too. Uh, Barbara Streisand, Cher. These are all great performers. But if I was to pick a favorite band from the 80s, I would have to say probably Journey. Okay. I really, really like Journey. I like his music, Steve Perry. That's awesome. And, um, then, and then as far as a song, if I was to pick a song, you know, it's funny that you asked me about a favorite song is because one of the most iconic songs uh, is Take Me, what is it, what's it called? It's 
called Take On Me. By AHA? Ah, take on me, take me on. Yeah, that song. Uh, sorry for the sorry for the, uh, the terrible uh, singing, but yeah, I, I think that's the most that's one of the most iconic songs from back in the day. Like you remember, like oh, that was the '80s. Billy uh, Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. Beat it. Uh, Every breath you take. Um, Into the rock era, sweet child of mine. Right? Remember Eye of the Tiger? Yeah. You know, put put Rocky on on top of the hill. You know, um, Tears for Fears. Uh, everybody wants to rule the world and shout. Matter of fact, I was listening to Shout this morning. It came on. I was listening to the 80s and, and it actually came on. Uh, well, how funny. Um, but my favorite movie, my favorite song from the 80s is probably In the Air Tonight uh, by Phil Collins. I love that song. It's very emotional. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could go back um, to the 1980s for one month, what would you do more? Wow, go back to the 80s for one month, a whole month, huh? Yeah. You know what I would do? I think I would go to the drive-in movies more. You know, I have never been into a drive-in movie and I really want to go see one. You know, it, it, it's no wonder, you know, that you have never been to a drive-in movies. You know, they were most popular in the 1950s. In fact, in 1950, uh, there were... 4,000 screens, drive-in screens up in the United States in the 1950s. Wow. But by the 1980s, there were less than 200 drive-in theaters in Canada and the U.S. combined. Less than 200. So it's holding, by the 80s, its popularity was fizzing out and uh, the traditional theaters that we know of today uh, started to become more popular. And then with the idea of being able to reserve seating, um, you know, buying tickets in advance, the indoor theater became the new drive-in, I guess, if you will. But that experience of being at the drive-in, I think I would watch every movie that I would ever go see for that entire month. I would, I would go to the drive-in. That is an amazing answer. Um, I was wondering, um, is, I was wondering, uh, is there any uh, sad parts or like any regrets about this era? You know, I try uh, real hard not to hang on to regrets. Um, is it, there's no amount of regret that you can go through that would ever change the past. The past is the past, and. The best that you can do is you can you can learn from it and then you move on. Um, I think if I was to pick a moment in the 1980s that was a particularly rough time for me, I would have to say in 1982 when my older brother passed away. I passed away in a military accident. Um, I was 17 at the time. He was 18. And... Uh, Unex you know, of course, unexpected, but it was definitely one of the most challenging times uh, that I had to go through as a teenager and, and even a young adult was uh, losing my, at the, who was one of my best friends, but losing my brother. Yeah. That is so sad. Should we continue on? Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I'm good. Uh, what was the affiliate sport at the time? Well, I played baseball as a, as in grade school even. You know, I played from Little League all the way up to high school ball. So to play the sport, I would have to say baseball was my favorite sport. I loved watching the game too, right? So who doesn't, who doesn't love a good baseball game, right? Uh, baseball, hot dog, and apple pie, right? That's, they say that's the all Americana, like that's America. Um, but you know, in the 80s, uh, when Michael Jordan hit the scene in basketball, I mean, he changed, not just him alone. There were some great players before him coming up as well. I'm not going to take away from, I mean, Boston Celtics had one of the best teams in the league. Uh, but when Michael Jordan came on the scene as, as a single player and the domination that he had on the court, he, he gave basketball a whole new face. As a matter of fact, he's, 
he's 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 an American icon. I mean, he's in every, if, I, I, maybe not every household in the United States, but everybody in the United States has heard, has heard about him or has bought his product or is even wearing his shoes today. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, so I would say that would be it. Like, baseball, my favorite sport. Basketball, I uh, became super interested when Michael Jordan was playing the game. That is amazing. Um, did you go to any concerts or special events during that time? You know, I was thinking, uh, concerts are special events. You know, special events that we always used to do as kids was we used to do walkathons. I don't know if you're familiar with what that is. The March of Dimes uh, was an, is an organization, and they used to have fundraisers, and, and they they help children with disabilities, and they would have this thing called a walkathon, and they would send the uh, pledge sheet or sponsor sheet out early. And then your job as a participant is you go out and you get pledges, uh, flat dollar amounts, or you get pledges per mile. And then as a kid, you and your friends would go and walk 25 miles, believe it or not, as kids. What kid today is willing to walk 25 miles? And so we would do these 25 mile walkathons. And then at the end, they would have like a big carnival, uh, or free food, free carnival rides. I mean, it was, a, it was an amazing uh, event. Uh, but as far as concerts go, I did attend uh, Motley Crue in the 80s. I saw Michael Bolton in the 80s. Um, I saw Blondie in the 80s. As a matter of fact, she was a headliner on a show after a walkathon that I did in Rocky Point. Uh, and I saw Hall & Oates in the 80s. Back when Hall & Oates was great. Uh, they were just, they're great. They're great. I'm not taking anything away from them today, but yeah, hold on. I thought they were pretty good back in the day. So yeah, those are my uh, my events. Okay. You know, Charlie, I've never really been to any concerts um, in my uh, years mm. of living. Young years, yeah. Yeah, my young years of living. Um, I would I would love to go to um, an '80s rock like Bon Jovi concert. Well, you better make that one happen pretty quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think I think there's a lot of cover bands out there, Ross. And uh, yeah, you know, you may just get your moment to shine and go to a, an '80s cover band concert. Would be just like attending the real thing if they if they were really really good. Uh, um, is there a really funny memory you wish to share while growing up? Wow, funny memories. You know, that's a great that's a great question. You know, I, I remember anytime I ever hung out with my friend Kevin, uh, there was always something that created laughter. Uh, he was my best friend growing up, and uh, I remember, I remember uh, one time we were jumping trains. And, and please, viewers, I'm not, I'm not advocating train jumping. I'm not. Uh, but you got to understand, back in the day when I was living in the '80s and I was a kid. Uh, we did a lot of outdoor activities, climbing trees, jumping from one tree to the next, uh, missing a limb, hitting a few on the way down. Um, yeah, so we did some crazy outdoor stuff. But I remember one time jumping on, jumping on a train, we were riding it, and then my brother and my friend Kevin jumped off, and they're hollering, they're hollering at me as the train is, as I'm pulling away, they're like, jump, jump, because the, the train is picking up speed. And uh, they were afraid that it was going to be getting going too fast, and they would have lost me somewhere miles down the road. So finally, I just listened to them. I jumped without looking. That's why it's always wise to look before you leap. And I landed uh, in a wildberry bush, a bush full of thorns. Oh, it was horrible. Funny for my brother and Kevin. Not so funny for me. Sorry about the bumping the mic. Um, and then the only other funny time that I remember was. Uh, that walkathon that I spoke about, one of them ended in Rocky Point Park, and uh, there was a girl that I liked back then, and I ran into her after the walkathon. She had attended the walkathon as well, and so there was this ride that she was just dying to go on. She's like, "Oh, I really want to go on this ride. I don't want to go alone, really." And she goes, "Like, Mike, would you, would, you know, would you please go with me? Would you please go with me?" And so I was like, "I was like, sure, I'll go," and. And now I kind of was crushing on her a little bit and we got on the ride and everything was cool. They closed the cage of the ride. And when the ride started, 
it was okay at first, but then as soon as that thing went upside down and started spinning and went as high as it did in the air, that was it. I started screaming like a baby. Here I, here I am trying try to impress this girl. She got off. I didn't see her the rest of the day. So yeah, that was probably one of the funniest moments that I that I could remember. Wow, <laughs> that, that that was a really funny moment. Um, out of all the years of the '80s, what year was your favorite to you, and why? Okay, so in a decade, ten years. I could say, you know, it was 1983 and the drinking age was 18 and I was, I turned 18 and so legally I could drink, but you know, that's not what I want to make your show about for the viewers because it actually was not a good time. I would say, I could say 1987, I was, you know, uh, 21, you know, and it's like, hey, life starts as an adult for me at 21. Uh, and I had to make my own decisions. But I would say my favorite year in 1980 was probably 1980 itself. You see, Ross, we were all there. My brother was there. My best friend, Kevin, was there. Uh, my siblings were there. My mom was there. We were a family. Uh, making memories, uh, listening to great music together. Uh, I was just discovering girls at the time. Uh, we were going places and just making great memories. So yeah, I would say 1980 was, was quite a year. At 15, I felt like I was on top of the world. Yeah, it was a good time. Well, that is amazing. But um, I, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, when you said, uh, when you hit 21, like that's when um that's when you had to start like thinking for yourself but when did that like happen when you were like 18 or 19. well I, no i didn't mean like i would start thinking for myself what i said is that's when adulthood started yeah you you legally i guess you can say that at 18 years old you, you kind of can do your own thing but when you're 20 when you're 21 uh there's nothing they still had they still had laws and stuff that, that pertain to people. Like even today, the drinking age and the smoking age is like to buy cigarettes or to drink or anything like that. Today, the age would be 21. Um, so you would think that, oh, maybe when he turned 21, it was different. And like I said, in the 80s, everything did happen to me when I turned 18. But at 21, to bring it into perspective for, for today's viewers, uh, you would think 21, man, you become an adult. And now every decision that you make the responsibility of it, the um, the reaction from that decision uh, comes with consequences, and those consequences at 21 they become yours and yours alone, whether they're good or bad. So that's that's what I was making reference to. Okay. Well, um, this concludes the interview and thank you so much for participating this back. I had a really fun time doing this interview. Uh, if it wasn't too long. <laughs> Ross, Ross, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And you know what? I think your viewers are going to be just fine. Have a great day. Everybody out there, have a great day and uh, come back and see Ross at all, 80s all... 80s everything group. Come back and see Ross at 80s everything group. See you later, guys.